This is a five-point summary of the British Orthopaedic Association standard for the care of the older or frail orthopaedic trauma patient published in May 2019. This standard applies to all patients admitted to hospital having sustained a fragility fracture and patients sustaining major trauma who have a Rockwood clinical frailty scale of five or more. One, all patients should be managed on a frailty pathway with comprehensive geriatric assessment commencing within 72 hours of injury. The pathway should demonstrate collaboration between pre-hospital, ED, orthopaedic, anaesthetic and orthogeriatric clinicians. Two, when indicated, cross-sectional imaging, i.e. CT, should be obtained at initial presentation in the ED. Imaging of the head should also include the cervical spine. So remember, when you're ordering your older patient's CT brain scan, think of the neck. When an unstable spinal injury is identified or cannot be excluded, the method of C-spine protection must be clearly communicated and recorded. I think this is an important point. Keep the CT radiographers in the loop. Remember that sometimes leaving a collar off and having a calm patient is better than forcing a collar on and having an agitated patient. 3. Patients with a serious head injury, GCS 8 or less, should be considered for transfer to a neuroscience unit. Older people who survive major trauma have similar outcomes to their younger counterparts. There is relatively little effective age on the proportion of patients with moderate or severe disability after major trauma, and a similar age effect is seen for interventions in the setting of aortic dissection, urgent thrombolysis and carotid endarterectomy. Older people should thus be selected for surgical intervention when appropriate, based on their biological and not chronological age. 4. There must be a pathway for the management of chest wall trauma that includes early access to regional analgesia. Also, there must be network guidelines for the selection and transfer of patients who may benefit from early surgery to stabilise the chest wall. The chest injury score, developed and externally validated by Battle and colleagues, is a cumulative morbidity and mortality risk score that may help such decision making. The higher the score, the higher the risk of complications as seen in the yellow box. And finally, number five. Units should be routinely using a validated delirium assessment tool, such as the 4AT, and have a delirium policy. The delirium policy should describe preventative measures, ensure rapid identification of potentially reversible causes, and deliver individualised interventions in line with NICE Clinical Guideline 103. The 4AT is a rapid clinical test for delirium. It's free to download and takes about two minutes to complete at the bedside. It has a large diagnostic test accuracy evidence base. A meta-analysis of 17 studies published in May 2021 showed a pooled sensitivity of 88% and pooled specificity of 88%, making it a good rule-out and rule-in tool, respectively. Thanks for listening.